Good morning, everybody. So this is part two of our adventure to Discovery Cove. If you have not seen part one yet, I recommend checking that out first. I'll link that video up above. But otherwise, let's get right into it and start with our adventure snorkeling. So we got our masks and snorkel and headed over there. And we actually snorkeled twice. Um, the second time was more exciting because we, when we got over there, there was the... They were feeding the stingrays. Yes. One trainer was feeding stingrays and it was just like, she was swarmed yes. with stingrays. It was a lot. But overall, what do you think of the snorkeling? It was cool. It was just hard. And I, this was also my first time really snorkeling. So that might also be why I think it's it's very hard. I all, it was very cool. It was cool to see everything because there were huge rays that would just go underneath you. I think I also maybe the equipment that they provided wasn't the the best equipment available. I also had a hard time with sizing. Yeah. Because I ended up they gave me a, an adult snorkel set. And the mask was way too big. It like covered half of my mouth almost, so I couldn't get the snorkel in properly. So then I ended up with a kid size snorkel set, but then the the actual snorkel itself, the mask fit okay, but the snorkel was too small, like too short. So I ended up wearing the adult size snorkel itself attached to the child size mask. And I am a, I am a grown lady. I'm a petite grown lady, but I'm still a grown lady. But I think that may have been part of my struggles. True. Or maybe it's just because that was my first time snorkeling and I was like, I'm breathing through a tube, help! Right. So. But like the dolphin water, this water is also salt water and mm -hmm. also pretty cold. So something to get, kind of get used to, um, kind of a wake up call if you're just like diving in and go snorkeling and oh, that's cold. Mm -hmm. um, but plenty of fish, it does get pretty deep. Mm -hmm. um, the more advanced snorkelers that were like diving down there closer to the, closer to the fish, but most people were staying at, at the surface. And you can also swim past the shark area. So the shark area is an additional charge. We did not do this one, um, where you can like walk on the bottom of the of the floor with the sharks coming around you with the helmets on and whatnot. Um, but there's like plexiglass, so you can kind of see into that area and see all the sharks, which is kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, lots of fish to see. Lots of rays, like you said. It was cool. It was just... It was hard. Yeah. Snorkeling is not as easy as it looks for all y'all snorkelers out there. But then after snorkeling, it was lunchtime. Mm -hmm. So went back over to the Laguna Grill for lunch. And this time they had jerk chicken 
and a churrasco steak and a Caribbean salmon, I believe. Some sort of fish. But what were your thoughts about lunch? It was fine. The main thing with the Discovery Co. food was that at least we didn't have anything that was amazing. Right. But it was totally fine. We were fed. There were, you could also get different things. Like I got the jerk chicken, which came with like veggies and rice, but I also got a side of fries <laughs> and a Caesar salad. So I was able to kind of like, cause I like, I like Caesar salad. So I was able to get some greens and get some healthy stuff and get some protein and just to make sure that, and some fruit. So mm -hmm. just to make sure that my body was fueled so I'd have the energy to keep snorkeling. Yeah. But lunch here was from 11 a.m. until 3.30. So they did have us pick a time at the beginning of check-in of when we wanted to go to lunch, whether it was 11, noon, or 1. We picked noon, although nobody was really enforcing that at all, and right. people went back a couple times. So something to keep in mind if you want to maximize your value and food intake, you can essentially do two lunches. If you go like right at 11, like 3 o'clock, you can get... But there are also snack bars yes. scattered in the property. How many are there? Just a couple? I think there were three, okay. three or four. But those are also an option if you're outside of food hours and feeling like you could use a little snack. Yeah. Because we had, before we left, at the end of the day, we had a soft pretzel to kind of cover us for dinner. And throughout the day, throughout the day had ices. Yes. Yeah, so these, these snack booths had pretzels, they had cookies, they had... Miscellaneous chips. And chips. Chi and Cheez-Its and like plantain chips, mm -hmm. um, a, a Coke machine, and then an icy machine, like you said. Yes. And they had a pina colada, banana... Um, and lemonade. Lemonade and, and white cherry. Um, so we did, we did get quite a few ices. And then the alcohol that's included, I guess it varies day by day, but... The day that we went, it, they had just wine and beer. The beer was, I think, just like Bud Light and just, just your standard, like, domestic beer. And then the wine, they had a Chardonnay and a Cabernet. So they had a red and a white. So one thing that we did to kind of make it a little bit better was to mix the wine with a sushi. I like the sweet stuff. I'm not into dry wine or real wine. I like my stuff nice and sweet. So to help make the Chardonnay a little less of itself, I mixed it with the Pina Colada Icy mm -hmm. and had that a couple times during the day. Yeah. And it was fine. It wasn't life altering. It did kind of help make the Icy a little less sickly sweet and the wine a little more palatable. Yeah. So <laughs> together it kind of worked out. And then the drink package, you mentioned that we did not get the drink package. It was $40 extra per person, uh, but that did include a larger selection of wine, a larger selection of beer, as well as like frozen cocktails and mm -hmm. non-frozen cocktails. So if you did not get the drink package, you could order the cocktails separately, mm -hmm. but we ended up just going with what, we, what was included for the day, so kept it nice and simple. Mm -hmm. So the last area of the park that we did not discuss was the aviary. So here you can, if you're a bird person, you can see some tropical birds, you can feed them if they're willing to eat. Um, I guess that, that depends on the time, of the time of the day because they didn't really want to eat when we were there. No, there were also several different areas of the aviary because we'd think that we were about to leave the aviary through a door and all of a sudden there was more aviary. Yes. So. The aviary is a lot larger than it appears from the Lazy River. So once you go in there, it's it winds a bit. Yes. But it was fun. We're not really like bird people. No. So didn't really... This was not the highlight of the day. So we didn't stay here too long, but it was fun. Got to feed some birds. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, you have to return your towels and your wetsuit and your mask, you get to keep the snorkel. And then as you walk into the park, they have a really coolly themed um, foot rinse station, which I liked. It was like a little waterfall for your feet. Um, 
And then on your way out is also where the gift shop is and the photo pickup area. So we looked at but did not purchase our photos. Yes. Just kind of snapped photos of photos from the screen, which I'm sure they don't want you to do that, but oops. It happens sometimes. But yeah, overall, very full day. The park does close at 5, so basically you have unlimited access from 7.30 until 5 p.m., and it's just all-inclusive for the whole day, which is very nice. Mm -hmm. Very non-traditional for Orlando theme parks. Um, but now let's talk about the price of this place, because it is a little pricey. So the tickets kind of range based on the time of the year and the day of the week. So the weekdays are much cheaper than the weekends, and obviously summer is going to be more expensive than like January would be. But the day pass for ages 3 and up starts at $149 each, and the dolphin swim starts at $224 each for ages 6 and up. Ages 2 and under are free. But that includes the day pass with the dolphin swim, correct? It's the, not on top of it? Yes, that, that includes, okay. that includes that. The day pass is everything except for the dolphin swim that we did. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have children that are under 6 that can't do the dolphin swim, you just you don't really know if you want to do the dolphin swim or not, you can get the day pass and still sit and see the dolphins. You, you can see the dolphins as much as you want for the whole day if you wanted to. So that part's nice. Um, they also have, because it's owned by SeaWorld, ticket options where you can go to SeaWorld and Aquatica and Busch Gardens as well. So the tickets that add SeaWorld and Aquatica are $40 extra on top of whatever the price was that you're doing out of the Dolphin Swim of the Day Pass. And then the ones that add SeaWorld, Aquatica, and Busch Gardens are $60 extra for the ticket. And what these do is unlimited admission to those two or three parks for 14 days on either side of your trip. So if you go to SeaWorld on day one and you go to um, Discovery Cove on day seven, then you can still go to SeaWorld and Aquatica through day 14, which is kind of nice. If you just do like a SeaWorld heavy vacation, spend a little bit more and you can get unlimited admission to extra theme parks for... Mm -hmm. A way um, to make Discovery Cove more affordable. Seem less expensive, at yes. least. Um, and one thing to note for Discovery Cove is when we went, I got a very good deal on these tickets on Black Friday. So if you are planning a trip and you can wait until Black Friday, keep a lookout for those, uh, those sales, because last Black Friday they were selling tickets for 50% off. So... Fantastic deals for that, so keep it, keep an eye out for that if you're interested in that, but it is still a very expensive day. Mm -hmm. But overall, what were your thoughts? Well, I'm not the type of person who loves to swim, so I appreciated that there were options to swim and options to float or lounge. We, in addition to hurting my foot, <laughs> We also tried to be responsible and use the animal-friendly sunscreen. That they provided. That they provide at Discovery Cove. And didn't apply enough, didn't reapply enough, and I ended up with some nasty sunburns, including on my hurt foot. So, double whammy on the foot, uh. But, so those were, those were kind of my negatives. The negatives are the price is pretty darn high, sunscreen issues, and that's partially on us. We yeah. wanted to do an animal safe sunscreen, but... It is SPF 30, and we don't know how good it is in the water. Right, we didn't know how how often you need to reply once you're, reapply once you're in the water. Right. So that was, those were kind of my negatives, and that the food, although it's included, wasn't spectacular. Yeah. But as far as experiences go, everything that we did was enjoyable. It was just that we had made our way around the entire park by lunch. So I don't think it's something that you can do a lot. Yeah. Based on price and the size of the property and what they offer, this would be something that 
would be more of a special occasion or very much a once in a while right. thing. It's not like it's not like having a Disney annual pass where you can go 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 and do different things every time. Right. It would be really difficult to go to Discovery Cove and do things that weren't the same every time and to stay the whole day. Which of course at a place like Discovery Cove you want to stay the full time to maximize the money you're putting into your day. So I guess that's kind of my thoughts. It was cool for a... it was cool to experience it and I'm glad we went and I had a really nice time and I loved Thelma but I don't see us rushing back. No. We'll probably go back eventually but it'll be a few years probably. But I kind of think of it as a cruise excursion on land. Um, you get all the benefits of like a Think, think of like a, a dolphin swim that you would do as a cruise excursion in whatever, Cozumel or wherever it may be. Um, you're paying slightly slightly less for like the hour and a half or so excursion. Whereas here you get whatever the 30 minutes, 30, 45 minutes with the dolphin itself. And then the rest of the to explore the park, you get alcohol included, you get food included. So... It is a special occasion thing, I, I agree with that, but I still enjoy it. It was a cool experience. It's My main thing is it's, I can't see us going back every weekend. Oh, definitely not. So That would also break the bank. Yes. And we're trying to have like money for a wedding. Yes. But yeah, overall, would recommend going there if you have not been before. I think um, kids would love it, the, the kids that we saw were having a blast so so yeah if you've been here before let us know in the comments below let us know if you had a similar experience with the surprising lazy river and not or so if great you food. have a good water animal safe sunscreen yes i'd love to hear a good recommendation for a sunscreen that is animal safe yeah so i don't fry yes so let us know that in the comments below. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time. See you real soon.